friends. Um, so I'm sorry if the lighting is kind of weird in this video. I should put the candle in. You guys liked that last time. Sorry if the lighting in this video is a little off. My normal lighting is a lot better. I'm having a cyanitis flare up and I literally can't look at bright lights right now. So we're doing it this way. But some major things happened and I wanted to give you guys my thoughts on them. Um, for those of you that don't know, Marlena Stell posted a very long video uh, titled Dear Influencers. It was an hour and 35 minutes long and it had a lot of information. So I decided I wanted to go through and just give you guys a little bit of my thoughts, my opinion on this stuff, and then I want you guys to leave your opinions down below, obviously, because I'm very interested to hear what you guys have to say. Um, I've done a little bit of research into some of the things that she's saying, so I will be providing my input on that as well, but I just think it's a really interesting video, and I kind of want to get into it, so uh, let's do it. The first part of the video, she really just talks about her experience with influencers before things changed, so I do think, and I think this is pretty a pretty popular opinion that the beauty community and the beauty space has definitely changed since it started and it's kind of gotten away in a sense from its original purpose. I think the original purpose of the beauty community was obviously to talk about makeup, to share your love of makeup, to talk about things like this. And then I think people came along and realized how profitable this, it's kind of like most things, like <laughs> it starts out really pure and innocent and then people come along and realize that they can profit and then it turns into something else. This isn't like a new thing. That's, this isn't just happening with the beauty community. It's with like all good things. Um, I think they start off great and then things like this happen. So she really reflects on how beauty influencers used to be, who she still feels are true to themselves. Like she mentions Patrick Starr and Kathleen Lights being people that stayed really true to themselves and stayed really grounded despite blowing up. Um, and she also mentions some influencers that she, I don't think she thinks very positively of anymore. I don't think she, obviously her and Jacqueline have a lot of issues and she does discuss that later in the video. But she mentions Manny um, and you can kind of tell that she does not think fondly of Manny, um, which didn't super surprise me because I think if we want to talk about influencers who really do, who I think if you want to talk about the first generation of influencers who really did start taking, I don't want to say taking advantage because I don't think they were taking advantage. I think they were doing the beauty community in a different way and profiting off of it unlike other people, Manny would be in that first generation of people. He definitely was in that first generation of people with like the Laura Lees, the Jacqueline, to understand how much money they could make off of sponsorships, to understand, you know, products. And stuff. Like they were the first few people that like understood that type of stuff um, and did it. And I think that kind of has opened a door. I think what she talked about in the very beginning is an interesting concept because she didn't really even blame just the influencers. She said, you know, the brand started doing it. Um, the consumers were, you know, buying it, were buying into it. And I think that's really interesting. Um, I could make a whole video on how I feel the beauty community has evolved and why I think it is what it is today but I think to put it perfectly it's kind of like a cycle so it's like well the brands know they can profit off of influencers influencers know they can profit off of their you know their their fans and their consumers and then um so and then the fans end up like helping the corporations as well so at the end of the day well I guess not really a circle it's more of like a I don't know. Um, but I think brands have found ways. I don't even think it's really the influencers. I don't want to say it's not their fault because I do think that if influencers had set a precedent early on that this wasn't how it was going to be, it could have avoided what we are now. But can you blame them? I can kind of guess how much AdSense money people are making based on how much I make and also based on sites like Social Blade. Um, so I can see how you're already making all this money that you never expected to make and now this brand is coming to you and they're offering you even more money to do something that's very easy. Um, it's easy. It's the epitome of what everybody wants. Everybody wants easy money. I mean, most people. I'm sure there's going to be a few comments saying they don't want that, but most people really want just like easy, fast money money. That is what people want. It's it's like the epitome of being a human being. Money makes your life easier, so you want it in the fastest way you possibly can. If you don't have to work hard for it, great, fantastic. And I think that's what's happened. I think brands know that. I think they reached out to influencers. I think influencers very obviously didn't turn it down. I don't think I would have if I was in the first stages of this and a brand was like, here's $50,000 to talk about a blush. 
I wouldn't turn that down either. Like, I don't think most people would. I said that when Marlena posted her first video. I don't think a lot of people would turn something like that down. But I do think it is sad to watch a community that what she talks, because I, I don't know this community that she's talking about. I don't know. I only started watching beauty YouTube like three years ago. So I don't even know this community that she's speaking on. I don't know these people. I wasn't there when this was all happening, but it sounds like a wonderful time. <laughs> it sounds like a time before, I hate to say it, cause I, I mean, I contribute to this in a way, obviously, but I, I mean, it sounds like a time before drama channels, before, you know, everything else and everything was so simplistic. Um, but I think what happened was, this is my personal, like, these hypothesis about what happened. I think when brands started getting involved, um, things inevitably got shadier because you have people, you know, not doing things, not abiding by the FTC because this was kind of uncharted territory and they thought they could get away with it. Um, and then once people started calling that out, uh, like the here for the tea, cause she was one of the first drama channels, I mean, and to her credit, say what you will about her, she severely exposed, you know, influencers not disclosing links and codes. I knew nothing about any of that beforehand. I, I remember I was watching a Kristen Dominique video and she pulled out the Morphe 35F and I totally bought what she was selling. Like I bought that palette because I thought she was just giving her honest opinion about it. I had no idea that she was making money from me using her code. I had no idea. Call me an idiot if you want. I don't think a lot of people knew how this stuff worked because it really is like uncharted territory for a lot of people. This is a new thing. Like Marlena says in her video, Makeup Geek was like the second brand to do affiliate codes along with Sigma Beauty. That was not that long ago. This is new stuff. The internet has brought forth a new style of consumer marketing and it's can it can be confusing it can be really confusing if you don't know what you're talking about so I think because of influencers doing shadier things people started speaking out drama channels were formed and then it just seemed like what can you trust I think that's how it all started like because there wasn't she's right there wasn't this much drama in the community a few years ago but I think it's a result of a lot of different things but I think the main catalyst is like brands and influencers being shady. I think that's like the, I think that's the peak of it. I think that's exactly how it started because it just started this snowball effect of it. Well, if they're lying about a Morphe code, are they lying about X, Y, Z? Are they lying about this? Like, what are they doing this time? Like, can we trust their brands? Like all of these things started happening. So I really appreciated her insight as somebody who was there, like somebody who saw it before and somebody who saw it after all of that happened. That was such a long rant, I'm so sorry. But it really got me thinking, cause I, I mean, I jumped into this community on YouTube at a time where things I feel were just starting to become crazy. And now over the past couple years, they've gotten even crazier. We've had two drama geddens like literally that's what they've been called. Um, we have lipstick gate, like all these crazy things have been happening. Um, and I was really happy she brought that up. I will say before I continue to, I know a lot of people think Marlena is like a pot stirrer. And I know a lot of people think that she like just wants to jump into the drama. And I can see where people are coming from with that. That's not like how I feel, I guess. I watch her and I see someone who's very empathetic and very almost to a fault. Like I think her empathy has been a cause for some of the issues that she's had because she's almost too uh, much of an empath. Like she's very, very empathetic. And I get that vibe from her. And I don't think that she's making the, I truly believe like, and this is, this is crazy. Cause I don't really believe a lot of influencers, but like, I truly believe she made this video cause she's done posting on YouTube as an influencer. Now she said she doesn't want to do it anymore. I truly think that she's a person who just wants to get things off her chest because she gets frustrated with things. I think this video is a direct response to the responses she was getting after her, like, I think it was like exposing the beauty community video, her like My Truth video, um, where she talked about the $60,000. She kind of got dragged for that video by a lot of people. A lot of people were really supportive, a lot of people weren't. And I think this is her response to that. And I think she's valid in that response. Um, I believe what she's saying. While I do think some of the stories she told very obviously were coming from a place of her bias, I still think that she's still speaking her truth. A lot of, I know that phrase is like gets mocked now because it's like, oh, their truth. But like, I truly think that this is her honest truth. Like this is her opinion of how things went down. Um, she does talk about the Jacqueline Makeup Geek thing. And she talks about how, she tells about the email, she talks about how they got leaked. Um, and she brought up a really good point where, but, I don't know, cause I don't know who I don't know who leaked 
the emails. I'm still a little bit confused how those emails ever got out in the first place. Like a year ago, the emails between Jacqueline and Makeup Geek, where it was kind of exposed that Jacqueline um, was really shady with the collab um, that they were going to do. I still don't know who leaked those emails, but Marlena seems to say it's not her that leaked them, which I was assumed it was Marlena, so I find that interesting. I do think she brought up a really good point about that, where, because a lot of people are saying now with the Jaclyn Hill lipsticks that Marlena is just malicious and like waiting for her to fail because she's bitter about this collab falling through. And I thought it was a really good point. You guys wouldn't even know about any of this drama if those emails hadn't have been leaked because I've never publicly dragged her for costing me money, costing me product, and all of these other things. I never had thought about that before because I've always thought she was pretty genuine even during this whole lipstick thing. I thought she was really honest and was really like speaking, again, her truth, like what she knew based on being a makeup brand owner. Like I felt the same way about Jen Gerard. She's a makeup brand owner and so I trust her opinion on these things because she's physically been in labs and she's done it. I can only know so much being a person who just like watches TV and watches YouTube on how makeup production works. Marlena and Jen know and they're being very open about the fact that what Jacqueline is saying is not true. So Marlena used that as a point to defend that she was like not going after Jacqueline for any reason and she also provided proof to show that she, even though Jacqueline and her had had some like disagreements and arguments that she was still like in private being supportive of her in certain ways and I thought that was very interesting too. Um, I did think it's sad I guess. I thought it was really sad the way that it seems like there's a history of and I think this is both on Marlena in part but I think it also speaks to how influencers are where it seems like she really does go above and beyond what a normal like CEO would do when it comes to interacting with influencers. Um, it seems like she does do a lot of things to help people and I think she, because again like I said I think she's too empathetic to a fault I think it's gotten her in situations like this and the whole Jacqueline thing I'll speak to that really quick too about Jacqueline Cosmetics not issuing a recall and instead deciding to I mean give everyone refunds but that means I okay so at first I saw that and I was like oh good they're giving everyone refunds and then I really thought about it and I was like no that's not really good because the only reason they don't want to recall is because then they would have to email all of their customers every single customer that they have and tell them that there's a recall happening and there's a lot of people believe it or not that are not on social media that still bought these lipsticks um, who aren't on social media who don't know what's going on who think their lipsticks are perfectly fine so by not having to issue, issue a recall they're avoiding telling those people that something could be wrong with their lipsticks and most people honestly are gonna get that money back and just be like oh you know what I mean like nobody's gonna think about that I guess instead of saying well it got recalled it's like well here's a refund I don't know it seems sus to me the whole Jacqueline thing. Hi it's editing me I'm in black and white because the lighting's literally horrible but I just wanted to add here that there has been some rumors I haven't been able to verify this but Wayne Goss uh, no not Wayne Goss Kevin James Bennett Kevin Bennett Beauty whatever has been saying that if you accept the refund which they are automatic refunds that you're basically saying you won't sue them super sus um, and the other thing the point I was kind of trying to make was just that like if it's not that nobody will notice a refund it's like they can just say oh it's just a couple people online that got bad batches so we're just doing this to like make it up to you guys versus having to say our lipsticks are dangerous and they're possibly contaminated they are contaminated that's been proven but like they're possibly contaminated they don't have to say that now they can just be like well people were complaining so we refunded them you know what I mean? That's how I feel. Okay. Anyway, I think Marlena genuinely does care that Jacqueline like screwed up this badly and she in inferred in her video that she knows, she thinks she knows what lab Jacqueline used and that she used a similar lab for products and they came out very bad because they were like concealers that she was going to launch, came out horrible with like hairs, black stuff, like the same stuff you're finding in Jacqueline's lipsticks. So Marlena feels like she knows the lab. She's not 100% sure if she does or not. She won't confirm it, obviously, because, I mean, legalities, <laughs> legal reasons. But um, if that's true, then I feel a type of way about Jacqueline Cosmetics as well, because Marlena made it very clear that she knew Jacqueline was working with this lab. And once she found out her samples were so bad, she went to Jacqueline and told her that this lab was not reputable. Um, and she feels like Jacqueline maybe had done it anyway. And to me, that kind of says to me even more, because I, I, all this whole time in my head, I'm like, Jacqueline knew. 
She knew the lipsticks were bad. Like, she did. There's, this is not some conspiracy where everybody lied to her and, like, no, that's not what happened at all. She knew that these lipsticks, something was off with them. And Marlena saying that even further, if the lab that she used is the same lab, like, whatever, it really, really solidified with me that, like, Jaclyn knew this whole time. Her whole opinion on the Jaclyn Hill lipsticks, I think, is really interesting. And I think if you're interested in hearing about it, you should definitely, like, check out her video. At least the first part because it was really interesting to hear what she had to say about that. She talked about James Charles. So that was, I almost forgot that that happened, the whole Netflix thing. Um, that was crazy. So I, I don't know because I, I haven't, I'm not, I'm not super keen on talking about James Charles on this channel anymore because I really, after everything that happened, I kind of just, I unfollowed him. I, I muted him on everything. Like I have no interest in following him or his life. I just don't care. Um, I just don't. But I do think she has some really valid points in the sense that he was a person who had no, there was no, there was no reason for him to be involved in that. And I do agree with her that like, that's embarrassing. <laughs> like she talked about that actual day when she tweeted out the photo and then James threw his hissy fit, which I think we can all safely call it a hissy fit because that's what it was. It was a hissy fit about not being asked to be in a documentary. And Marlena basically, it was like, it was incredibly embarrassing to me. And I'm like, yeah, because you seem like an actual professional person, unlike the 19 year old millionaire who likes to throw hissy fits to get his life. That's just how I feel. Um, and I was like, I was kind of like, yeah, that seems embarrassing. And I thought it was very interesting that in the DM, she literally was like, Netflix is not happy. You've closed a door with them now. And if anything, I hope, like, she seems to be still upset about it. And I totally understand why, because the way that he demeaned her, demeaned her opinion, demeaned her brand, um, was really gross. It was really gross. At the time, looking back on it, it's gross. It was a gross thing to do. Um, I hope for him that that was a learning lesson and you can't just always be so react. I don't think it was based on what's happened since, but I feel like it should have been a lesson of you can't be this reactionary because it will limit your options. Um, and that's how I felt about that. And then the other thing I thought that was interesting was she basically said like, you know, it's uh, something about the dog that barks the loudest or whatever, like talking about the $60,000 thing. And I do think that it is very interesting, the influencers who were so mad at Marlena for talking about that because James was one of them. He made a whole video with Tati where he discussed how it was absolutely no one's business how much influencers were making. My question is like why is that no one's business? It's public record. You can go on Glassdoor and figure out what pretty much any job title is making at one time. I don't see why it has to be this big secret. If anything, I think the transparency would be really helpful because as I stated earlier, the reason so much drama has started was because of a lack of transparency transparency when it came to businesses and influencers. I digress, but like <laughs> it makes sense that someone like Nicole Concilio, who probably, I mean, she's probably charging a lot of money for these things. It makes them look bad to their audience. And it probably made James look bad. Probably made a lot of people look bad <laughs> when they kind of said it probably made, I mean, it probably made a lot of people look bad hearing someone say they get paid $60,000 for, you know, an ad like that makes people look bad. But at the same time, she makes a great point that the people getting so defensive weren't saying it wasn't true. They were trying to discredit Marlena and her business in that way. She talked about, but after the James thing, she talked a lot about makeup geek as a whole and why, cause I think there's been a really big thing about Makeup Geek the past couple years and I totally agree with this because when I first started YouTube um, like watching it I wanted to try Makeup Geek because everyone was using it and then it just kind of stopped and then I stopped being interested because I wasn't being shown it in every video um, and I just wasn't you know what I mean and I think she made a lot of good I think I think for her as like a brand owner I think it was important for her to talk about those things however I do wish she had done it in a separate video. I understand she didn't want to make separate videos, but to me, it kind of felt a little, I, w I just kind of wish she'd done it separately because I feel like now, even if this wasn't her intention, I think now it kind of almost seems like, well, she did all of this so she could also do promo for the new things that are coming for Makeup Geek, which I don't think was her intention in doing it. I think she genuinely just wanted to like talk about everything. However, similarly to when Tati talked so much about Halo Beauty and like her sister's videos, which she did about James, that left a bad taste in my mouth because at the same, while I understood what she was saying and I empathize with Tati and I'm empathizing with Marlena, I do wish they didn't talk about their brands because it makes it seem a little bit more 
calculated as like a marketing technique. Even though that's not what I think is happening, I think other people are gonna see it that way. And I think from like a, just a person, an outsider perspective, that's not necessarily the move when you're doing a video like this. I think it's important to just stick to what you wanna say and leave your business out of it. Um, bring your business back later, you know what I mean? Um, but she did talk about Makeup Geek and why maybe people feel like they're kind of falling off, why, you know, why they've been delayed. Everything she said made sense, like it added up didn't feel suspicious in any way. It seems like she just had some really bad luck with labs, honestly, which does suck. Um, but I, I do hope that she can like turn that around for the sake of her brand. Um, I think the rebranding is going to be interesting. I hope she comes out with things that are interesting and that, you know, I'm interested in because I, I look at their palettes now and it's, it's not to be rude to them, but it's palettes I have and they're a little, they're a little expensive. Um, I look at their highlighters and they look beautiful, but they're highlighters I have and they're a little expensive and it's, it's like nothing super, super crazy innovative is coming from Makeup Geek at the moment. So I am excited to see what she has going forward. I'm excited to see what she has has coming up. Um, besides that, she talked about some like beef with some smaller influencers that she's had and with just like other people in general. She called out Nicole Concilio for siding with James, which I'm glad she did. Nicole actually has been tweeting now. <laughs> like I wa as I was watching this, I got on Twitter and I saw, cause it's been like an hour and a half long. Um, I got on Twitter and saw that Nicole was tweeting apologies to Marlena for that. And a lot of people were kind of like, okay, well this was a year ago. So where was your apology a year ago? Um, but you know, as long as it, it came, it came, whatever. Um, I do think what Nicole said was very reactionary, but again, kind of like what Marlena is saying, it makes sense that she's someone who spoke up because she was probably pissed. I think they're all just pissed at her. Like, I think they're just mad that she exposed this. I really do. It's kind of just how I feel. I think they're all just mad that she's telling the truth in an industry that seems to be very Wizard of Oz-esque. Like, they're very much like the wizard behind the, the curtain. They don't want you to know the details of things because in their minds, it spoils everything. When to me, I would love to know. <laughs> I think I would trust people so much more if they were just like, this is how much money I made. That's, you know what I mean? whatever um so she called out Nicole she also called out this one girl she didn't call her out by name but I wanted to bring this up because I actually went and found this girl's video um her name is Mel Ray Seagal Marlena didn't mention this in her video she didn't mention her but she did mention the title of her video so she made her very easy to find so no, makeup geek did me dirty it's about it's a girl who I think this girl is ridiculous. I'm not gonna lie to you guys. I think Marlena is completely in the right here. And I think the fact that this girl <laughs> is trying to spin this as like being a smaller influencer myself, this girl is ridiculous. Um, so she basically says that Makeup Geek like reached out to her. They offered to pay her a hundred dollars and like to do this photo thing and she did it and whatever. She's claiming she didn't agree to have it put on the website, all these things, right? I think truly this girl is just mad that she wasn't put on like a permanent PR list because when she was talking about it, she was like, I only accepted it because I thought it would be like, I knew a hundred dollars wasn't a lot of money, but I thought it would be this long standing relationship with Makeup Geek. Um, and I guess it wasn't for her. And so I think she's mad about that. And I also think it's like, she kind of contradicted herself. Cause she's like, well, a hundred dollars isn't that much money. But then she's like, I think they were taking advantage of small influencers. Um, cause they don't know their worth. And it's like, but that's not Makeup Geek's fault. <laughs> Not to be on the side of a brand because I very much believe that there are brands that take advantage of smaller influence. I've been, people have tried to take advantage of me and like make me do things that I'm not comfortable with or things that I know I have worth and that like my words have value. And it sucks that you feel that way. It sucks that you feel like $100 wasn't a lot. Of, I don't know how many followers she had at the time, but $100 like isn't terrible money if, if you're under like trying to think about because like right now my thing would be higher than that like my rate would be higher than I've never given a rate I've never done a sponsorship but it would be higher than that for something like that but if she was under if she was truly truly small that might have been actually like a good rate for her I don't know what her size was she also complained that in the release video Marlena didn't mention her by name um or give her credit for like her channel like she said she would so my question is like why didn't you bring that up with them when this happened why did you wait until Marlena was kind of a topic of conversation to put out this video and to get views and to get what I deem as like pity I guess because you didn't make a good business decision and she sent them a letter to take it down she sent them a cease and desist and they immediately took down the picture like what else do you want truly what else is she I guess she wants money because that's what Marlena said but that one rubbed me the wrong way because I don't like 
when small influencers try to like manipulate situations like that. Any bad business decisions that I made when I was smaller than I am now even, and any bad business decisions I might make in the future, hopefully I don't make any, but if I do, like if I undervalue myself, if I don't advocate for myself, that is my, that's on me, like that's my fault. The brand offered what they were going to offer and I have ev everything in my power to say no. She had it completely in her power to say no and because she wasn't put on a PR list she was salty and honestly this part made me like actually mad like I was actually really annoyed at this girl because it just makes smaller influencers look bad in my opinion I don't know maybe I'm crazy but that was pretty much the video she talked more about a few other things she talked about she talked about how she's starting like a jewelry line and I don't know it it does seem very interesting what she's saying I think you should go watch the video I really do I think it was interesting I think it was an interesting perspective that's all I really had to say about this topic I guess that was pretty much all the things she covered in her video. That's really all I had to say. Um, I hope you guys like this video. I know it's, I'm cutting it a little short here, but I do want to try to get this up by tomorrow. So hope you like this video. If you did, please like and subscribe or just like or just subscribe or do neither. Honestly, just so happy you're watching me. Thank you so much for being here. My merch, my social media, and everything I'm wearing on my face will be linked down below. And yeah, let me know what you guys think about all this. Um, I love you guys. Bye.